Hi everyone, I'm Josh and welcome to Josh Wright Piano TV. Today's episode is about quality instruments and how a quality instrument can change your experience at the piano. This is actually a follow-up to a video I recently saw on YouTube um, by Robert Estrin on his channel Living Pianos and he had said something like, should you buy a Steinway piano? And I watched it and he brought up a lot of good points in that video and I just, it got me thinking I should share something similar to that on my channel because um, this has motivated a lot of people when I've shared these stories. A lot of people are on the fence about how much difference an instrument actually makes. And I'm here to say it makes a giant difference in your, not only enjoyment at the piano, but in your technique and your progress at the piano. I wanna share seven stories today about seven different individuals six students and then the last one is about uh, my wife actually and I wanted to go through and these are all different um, types of stories they, these are not all oh they, they went and bought a Steinway B and it was a miracle it wasn't that and it doesn't have to be a Steinway it, a lot of people um, are inspired by different brands of instruments I know a lot of people love Fazioli a lot of people love Yamaha a lot of people love Shigeru Kawaii that would be their dream instrument um, I'm definitely a Steinway guy I really enjoy Steinway pianos both Hamburg and New York Steinways for different reasons um, but all of that isn't the main point of the video I'm not trying to push one brand on you I'm trying to inf um, instill the truth that a quality instrument can help you in more ways than you think. The first story I want to share is uh, my good friend Mitchell, who was my former student. He wanted to start piano as a hobby, so he contacted me, and he had just a little Casio keyboard. He was working through, I think, some online programs when he contacted me, and he was very wealthy, and he said, you know, p money's not an issue. Should I get a better piano, or should I keep the Casio? I said, you should get the best piano you can afford. So he did a bunch of research, and he ended up getting a Yamaha N2, which is a digital piano, um, because he lived in a high-rise apartment, and he had to practice often late at night or early in the morning um, in order to not disturb his neighbors. There was a lot of sound ordinances in his building. The Yamaha N2 is one of the best digital pianos you can buy because it imitates uh, the feel of a real piano. Now, it's not the same, of course, because you're not physically lifting a hammer, but you are lifting a physical mechanism in that digital piano. He drastically improved. That leads me to my next story about just upright pianos. Uh, my student very similar situation. She lives in Hong Kong, and she had an old upright piano that was just not serving her well. She couldn't really get much dynamic contrast in the piano. She saved her money up, and she got a Boston upright piano, and immediately she was able to create so much more dynamic contrast. Her touch has improved. Um, she's making great progress at the piano, uh, playing the Greek concerto right now, actually. Um, it, it led me to um, I had this music up here for another tutorial I'm filming tonight, and um, this is the Nocturne Opus 37 number one in G minor by Chopin. And those colors in the dynamic contrast that I was talking about, you can explore so much uh, in terms of color and timbre and voicing if you have a quality instrument. For instance, you could go... That's with the uno corda pedal down. If you wanted a little bit more singing quality. Or maybe a little bit more full bodied sound. A little bassier. that all of these things can inspire you um, when you are playing on a better instrument. Uh, which leads to my next student, Adi, who lives in Canada. He, I believe he came from a keyboard, and he bought a Kauai Grand Piano. I think it's 511. I think it's the G2X um, Kauai Grand Piano. He has made tremendous progress. I mean, he's playing the second scherzo. And he was able to explore so much more variety in the textures and the characters that he's been playing by having an instrument that really inspired uh, 
different sound palettes and and different colors. And by the way, this is uh, these words like tone quality and timbre and color. These are not meant to alienate or make me sound like a stuffy classical musician. If any of you know me from my channel, I'm about as far from a stuffy classical musician as you can get. Probably a little too casual on this channel sometimes, but it's because I want to dispel all the myths about, you know, the egotism of, of classical music. I think it's... Uh, it's ridiculous. So anyway, um, he was able to make tremendous progress in a very short time period. I remember another one of my students who didn't take piano quite as seriously. He he took it seriously. He would practice for an hour or an hour and a half a day. Pretty musically inclined guy, but he was the star of the football team. And um, he and his mom was a very talented pianist. Uh, his name was Scotty. Uh, loved teaching him. He's such a nice kid. And I can't remember if he was playing the Sansons. <laughs> The, the sensitivity that he then brought once he started playing on, they bought a Steinway B um, from the 90s, he was able to immediately discover a new touch. Um, so the, the action of the keyboard can be huge. Actually, this piano, I don't know how much I've gone in this channel into it, or maybe it was in the VIP Masterclass series, one of my online paid courses. Um, but this piano gave me a lot of issues. We bought it. I love the sound of this piano. It's, I've always loved the sound of it a lot. We've, we've tweaked the sound a lot. We've brightened things up. But um, the action felt a little heavy when we bought it. But I was like, yeah, it's no big deal because it had new hammers on it. Um, this is from the 80s. And I thought, you know, when I was younger, my parents had purchased a new piano and I noticed it got lighter the, the brighter it got. Like it felt lighter. It, it wasn't necessarily lighter, but it felt bright, lighter because the piano brightened up. Well, that wasn't the case. Unfortunately, the geometry of this action was not good. So I hired a technician to reweight the keyboard and he did all sorts of stuff. And now it's able to serve me so much better. Like with all those Paganini etudes that I recently performed in December uh, by list, I performed the whole set at a couple small concerts and this piano served me so much better once we had made those action adjustments. So uh, same thing with Scotty. He, he found an entirely new touch once he started practicing on a higher quality instrument. Next student, Michael, um, he's a very bright kid. I think he's 17 or 18 now. Um, I actually taught his mom before him, uh, who I loved teaching. And when she had a baby, she said, you know, maybe you can teach my son, Michael. And um, it turned out to be a great... Uh, thing because I've loved teaching him and he went from an old upright it might have been a Baldwin I can't remember uh, the brand but uh, he actually owns his own business he's 17 years old owns landscaping business very successful and he himself purchased a used Steinway um, which was just incredible um, I was so proud of him not only for his pianistic accomplishments but for being a great entrepreneur it's amazing and I remember he was playing the Volados uh, cello sonata um, transcription of Rachmaninoff's cello sonata. And the imagination that that new piano brought out in his playing was stunning and he's been playing some Beethoven and Bach and he's become a much more sensitive musician. Um, that leads me to my next student who's uh, about 15 years old I think. He went when he first came to me, he came to me when he was nine, I think he's 15 years old now and um, he was a cute little boy and he had an old upright that his mom had purchased a long time ago, and he was doing great things. He had played at Carnegie Hall as part of the American Protégé competition, um, and he'd made some very nice little recordings. But he upgraded a few years ago to a Steinway M. He made tremendous progress. His He's the one, I've mentioned him on this channel before, that had the Earl King octaves, which were you know as fast as Evgeny Kissin's after three days of practicing it. He just has a natural gift with octaves. It's, it's amazing. But that piano was bothering him. He's like, it feels extremely heavy. 
Um, there's some action issues that I'm not really liking. It goes out of tune so quickly. And his parents are like, look, we're willing to invest if you're able to find a better instrument um, because he's decided he wants to pursue this at a college level. So we're willing to invest in an even better instrument. And I, um, along with him, we were able to find a very good Steinway D uh, from the 60s that had been rebuilt. It has been breathtaking to see the imagination, the sensitivity, the... um, the tone quality that he's been able to get out of that instrument. And that leads me to talking a bit more about, yes, it can help you develop a better touch. It can help your technique, but also the sound of an instrument. Like if you're playing Jado by Ravel. If you can have an instrument... that allows you to explore different shadings of piano and pianissimo. And you can do this on most instruments, but certain instruments make it much easier and they have a wider range of that. He recently played the Beethoven Third Concerto with orchestra, third movement. I will probably be posting that to this channel as a a student feature performance. It was amazing. He did such a nice job. And not only does he work extremely hard, he has great parental support. I do my best to teach him as best as I can, but that piano made a difference, um, and he would be the first one to tell you that it made a difference in his playing. The last story that I wanted to share was about my wife, Lindsay, um, and she was, uh, I think she was in her first year of her master's degree. I was in the second or last year, second to last or last year of my bachelor's. She's a year or two older than I am, and um, she's uh, she came home one day, and uh, we had recently purchased the little Hamburg Steinway O um, from the 70s. It looks brand new, but it, it it was just refinished on the outside. Nothing has been done to it. Um, all original condition, so we were able to afford it, luckily. Um, which leads me to a point, don't go into a lot of debt for a, an instrument. Um, you know, save up for it, be financially responsible. That's a topic for another video, but being a musician requires you to be good with your money because it's a it can be a tough career it can be feast or famine anyway um she said she was playing the uh carnival in vienna by schumann and she said it was so funny today susan uh Duhlmeier, who's our brilliant teacher who's taught us for so many years she's an amazing woman an amazing teacher she said susan's told me that i was it's just I'd been drastically improving over the last couple of months, and she kind of grilled me like, what are you doing differently? Are you practicing differently? Are you practicing more? What are you doing? And she's like, I haven't really changed my practice routine, um, the ways I'm practicing. I'm not really sure. And she's like, what else has changed? Are you practicing on a different piano? She's like, well, we did purchase uh, a Steinway piano a few months ago, and she's like, that's it. And I thought that that was a little bit – Before that time, I thought that that was a little bit, you know, I know a good instrument can help you, but having taught so many students who have upgraded their instruments over the years, having experienced it with my pianos and my wife seeing her improvement with our pianos, seeing my own improvement as I've explored different uh, pianos and had to adjust, you have to adjust as as a player um, to every instrument you're on, but practicing on a very high quality instrument can drastically improve your playing. So I would encourage each of you, I know this is an absolute crazy time in the world with inflation and uh, war. Um, I don't even want to get into political stuff on this channel. Um, But uh, so it's a difficult time, COVID, everything. But if you're able to set aside a little bit of money each month and save up for an instrument that will help inspire you more. It's a purchase that you won't regret. It is something that will inspire you and help you achieve greater levels of artistry at the piano. So I hope that's been inspiring. If you've been on the fence of like, should I upgrade my instrument? Should I should I just not do anything about it? Should I just deal with it? Will an instrument even make a difference in my playing? I'm here to say it absolutely does. Um, if any of you have any questions, my email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. I'll leave a few links in the description below as well. One of them is for a free webinar containing 10 of my favorite tips to help take your playing to a higher level. These are tips I use every day in my teaching and practicing. 
I will also leave a link for a couple of my paid courses if you'd like to go even deeper with repertoire and exercises and other concepts than this channel goes over. And then finally, I will leave a link to my kit, which is all the gear that I use to film these videos and record my podcasts in case you're wanting to do a bit more recording of yourself. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions. Thank you.